Often at 7am, the Office for National Statistics releases numbers. It's just released some unemployment numbers. And they're actually not too bad at all. Unemployment's at 4.1%. A lot of us expected unemployment to spike during the pandemic. It, it didn't. Lots of people left the workforce, so it's 4.1% of a smaller number. But I think for the most part, people can find work. But the trouble isn't that people are unemployed like they were in the early 80s and then again in the early 90s. It's the average wages are, are slow and they're behind inflation. And some other numbers that the ONS just put out show that during the three months, October, November, December, real wages, that is after inflation, actually fell by almost 1%. That's really significant because that was before we got really big inflation. We've had much bigger inflation in the early part of this year. Everyone knows the cost of living is rising. We talk about it on GB News all the time. Yeah. I know you guys mm. hit it every single morning. It's what people really, really care about. Um, and as the cost of living goes up, the wages after inflation will get more and more compressed, and unfortunately, more and more people will find it tough to make ends meet. Uh, and the ONS also giving some interesting, interesting insight into the impacts of uh, the pandemic on the workforce, saying the number of self-employed workers remains low following decreases seen during the coronavirus. But it's interesting that obviously people are getting jobs elsewhere, but they're just finding that working for themselves is just not favourable at the moment. They are. They're getting jobs, but jobs aren't paying the way they did yeah. before the pandemic. I mean, they are in some sectors. If you're an HGV driver or you're a chef, for Hospitality, instance, yeah. big shortages. But in general, wages are lower. And the other thing is that more and more people have withdrawn from the workforce. They don't count as unemployed anymore. So the unemployment numbers are lower. And we should bear in mind, rightly, you have focused this morning on Russia, Ukraine. That isn't just a geopolitical story. That's the reason oil's almost $100 a barrel. That's driving prices when you go and fill up your car or your van of petrol and diesel. Another thing, it's going to drive higher food prices. Russia is the world's biggest wheat exporter. Ukraine's the world's third biggest corn exporter. If there is an escalation in conflict, if there are sanctions, yeah. expect basic food prices, unfortunately, to go up as well. Yeah. Is there any good news, Liam, at all? Because... None of this seems resolvable in the short term. Mm. I think the good news is that the UK remains a very entrepreneurial place. We're still generating lots of jobs. There's lots of inward investment coming in to the UK. So I'm generally an optimistic person about the UK economy. When we travel around uh, uh, reporting for GB News from the, the, the nations and regions of the UK... There is a lot of real entrepreneurial ability. There is a lot of jobs being created. The trouble is these energy prices, when these energy prices kick in in April, not just for households, but also for businesses, some of that investment is going to be threatened. So I do think the government's going to have to do more yeah. to tackle those high energy you prices. Know, I, yeah. When people like yourself, you talk about entrepreneurial...